Welcome, everyone, to a brand new episode of Is This Love Podcast. Yeah, we- beautiful. <laughs> Which yeah, it's not. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, apparently, it doesn't uh, really work with spooky season, which is where we are. The spooky season. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, ghosts and goblins and ghouls scare you on a regular basis here <laughs> on Is This Love, where we talk about and answer your questions in regards to the weird and wonderful world of love and relationships, and occasionally boners. Uh, in, this episode, <laughs> um, in this episode, I am Francis, a.k.a. the other guy, and I think when we do our Halloween episode, I'm going to think of a spooky name. I want to think of a spooky name to give myself. Uh, and you. Okay. All right. So, I should come up with a spooky yeah. name. And with me is the ever so adorable to animals, Sarah <laughs> Nade. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Hi. Because I'm pet sitting, right? Yes. Uh, for those who... Well, you wouldn't know because this was all done off air and behind the scenes, but uh, it's always <laughs> cute to see someone and listen to someone talk to animals because it's, it's just, I don't know, there's something adorable adorable about it. So Sarah, doing that is just fun to listen to. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know, I, you know, when I had pets... Mm-hmm. I don't know how much I talk. I don't remember because it's been a while. It's been many years since I've had a pet. I don't remember how I talk to them. I think I talk to them very little, or maybe I. T- I don't. Or did I talk to them a lot? I don't know. I don't remember. Really? But- oh my god! I talked to Pete so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that Pete recognizes when you say the word treats, for instance. Like, he does, and he recognizes like different tones in my voice too. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I and I'll have like certain things I say, and it's like always in the same tone. And he's like, "Oh, it's time to like do out the cuddles, <laughs> or it's time to play." Oh, okay. So, oh, that's you know, cool. I, okay. <laughs> yeah. I used to give him lots of pets and like lots of praise when I noticed that he had actually cleaned his bum. So. If I like note that he has a very nice clean bottom, he gets all like purry and starts like rubbing up against everything. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Well, yeah, because it gets rewarded for for that but behavior. He doesn't. Sure. He doesn't associate it with actually having like done his laundry. So unfortunately, right. it doesn't make him do it more. <laughs> But at least when he does do it, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. He's like, it's I'm like, oh my it. gosh, you did it! Yay! Yay. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I think what really surprises me is when cats know their name because I did. I remember calling out to my cat, and there, you know, uh, his little head would turn. He'd be like, oh, oh, you're talking to me. Oh, okay. Like every time <laughs> I said the cat's name, uh, Remy was his name, and Remy would turn his head and go, oh. Oh, you're talking to me. Oh, okay. And 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 like wouldn't do anything, right? Wouldn't come to me. Wouldn't do anything. But would just like would make that little head tilt and little turn every time <laughs> I said his name. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, as I guess it's like I don't need you over here or anything. But sure, at least you know what I'm talking to you. So yeah, yeah. I, I've heard that about cats. Like they they recognize their name. They just don't care. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have like so many names for Pete, though. I. I, and I don't like, sometimes I don't call him Pete for a really long time because I call him so many other names. Oh, wow. Why? Okay. I, have, I feel like everyone who has cats does this. You okay. just cannot help but come up with like a bunch of nicknames for your cat. Uh, Maybe. I don't remember. I, I think I just, I don't remember though. Maybe Again, it's just people it's I know. <laughs> maybe. I mean, maybe I called my cat several things. I, I do know I did call my cat cat. <laughs> just cat. <laughs> Hey cat. I do call I call Pete that sometimes when I'm upset with him. I'm like, cat? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to stop doing that right now. <laughs> the same thing when I had a dog, you know, I had a I had a little Jack Russell Terrier, which was a lot of work because they're very, very excitable and very energetic. But, you know, he, he was his name was Billy. And Aww. you know, Billy would recognize his name. He did like cuddling too, which was really weird for a tiny dog. Cause he was a tiny little dog, you know? Aww. But he's like, okay, I'll just rub up against you, you know? 
uh, when 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 uh, my my girlfriend at the time and I would sleep, just sleep right between us, just right in the middle between the two of us because we're warm. And so like, okay, just right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, and every time I'm like, I'm going to kill you. I'm a large human being. I will crush you if I. <laughs> but oh. I never did. I never did. But yeah. I was always afraid I was because I'm asleep. About it. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. asleep, I will crush you, and you will die. So please don't sleep between us. But didn't, didn't matter. <laughs> so no, I, I think pets are great. Um, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get another pet again. Uh, I, I don't know yet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> They're responsibility, and it means you can't just like fly off somewhere on the you know the drop yeah. of a hat. So yeah. you have to make sure someone's taking care of them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, there are services that take care of that if you're willing to, you know, procure the services of of kennels and things like that, where they'll take care of your pet for you. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, it's it's a weird it's a it's a weird thought and a weird exp- weird idea. But pets are. I mean, I I really loved having a pet because they're really, you know, when they're on you and they like really enjoy your company and they really want you to play with them or really want to spend time with you. It, it there's like oh, it feels really good. Yeah, like, it's really nice. <clears throat> it is not, it's yeah, yeah it's a wonderful feeling yeah. oh, they can be awfully naughty though too <laughs> <laughs> that's true you've seen pete be naughty several times yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> i've been aware yeah that but cats i feel like that's kind of in their nature versus where dogs usually are pretty much in their best behavior up until you leave <laughs> <laughs> right, and they're like, ah, now yeah. I can be myself. <laughs> yeah, now I now I know now I'm not being watched. I have power <laughs> now. So anyway, there you go. Not spooky, but oh, I guess one. I guess one question, since it is spooky season, do you dress your cat up in a costume? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, <Okay. laughs> I've tried putting him in this harness that's like, you know, like a half of an ounce, and it's like two straps basically and he acts like i've put 50 pounds of like weighted <laughs> blanket on top of him he like goes down into like the army crawl position oh wow, wow. yeah he doesn't like things on him very much okay now is the, is the harness for so you can walk well that was the idea oh, okay <laughs> I took him out of my apartment and like he was doing that like s- like crazy slinky crawl <laughs> through the hallways and he was trying to get into every single door along the way. I was like, "Can you? Are you so like distressed right now? You can't remember which one is ours." Um, I'm amazed. I'm always amazed when people walk their cat. Like that's always surprising to me that people walk their cat um, like on a harness and on a leash. That that always that's just such a weird concept because they're already running around in your home. Uh, it's so interesting that you let them just run around leashed in public. I guess because it's not an outdoor cat, right? It's an indoor cat. One most ninety well, percent of the time. I think <clears> you <throat> just have to train them young or something. Like, yeah. I wish Pete would let me walk him, but yeah, he really doesn't like it. And I've thought about like getting him used to it, but he really doesn't like it. And mm. so I've like tried two or three times. I remember in Japan, we were walking down the street one night, and someone was outside with their cat on a leash, and it was just sitting there. Like a dog. It was so, like, well-behaved. It was so cool if Pete could do that. That cat cafe in Japan that I went to was just, like, such an eye-opener on what you can do with cats. Like, so amazing. Because, again, (laughs) when I left, right, like, everything in there was like, okay, the cats did whatever they wanted. But when I left, the guy was like, Oh, you're leaving? I sure don't want to stay for a little bit longer. I'm like, no, that's okay. Like, I really, I had fun, but that's okay. And it's like, all right. And he just called each cat by name. And one by one, they came to the door and sat and looked up oh my at God. me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. One by one. He just go, all right. Hey, you know, Daisy. Hey, you know, Scratchy. Hey, And they just, cr- they would run up, sit, look up. And while I'm putting my shoes on, and I'm like, you <laughs> like you really like that's a, this is a good and all I told him was like this is a good attempt to make me stay but no I really have to go because it's already late but I'm like <laughs> yeah and it was like late it was like eight o'clock at night and stuff I'm like I really want to go home or I really want to go back to my hotel don't you want to buy more cat shaped cupcakes <clears throat> no it was cool yeah I mean they didn't have that weirdly enough but you know it's just like just hanging out it was really cool to hang out with cats and like they 
just doing nothing. And they're they're like, yeah, if you call your their name, they'll come to you. And they have like a little book with their names and stuff. And I tried it, but I don't think I have the. I had an American accent, so maybe they didn't recognize it. <laughs> right? Didn't <clears throat> like it. <laughs> yeah, because this guy didn't have an American accent, obviously. But I spoke great English, but no, no. Uh, but obviously, I had the Japanese accent going. So I don't know. But anyway, I want that. If I'm gonna get a cat, I want that kind of like. That kind oh, man. of responsiveness. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the guy did. I want to know what this is the dude's secret so I can just have him s- just on command. Be like, all right, you know, Julius, come over here. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and Julius sitting, you know, and doing his Julius, thing. Julius. I love I that know. name for a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good name for a cat, right? Maybe I'll have to, I'll have to name my next cat Julius. Um, so and my, serious. And my name dog, my next dog Caesar, and that'll be great. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Actually, Caesar is a good name for a dog. Yeah, oh, it is. but Caesar Milan is the dog whisperer. I'm just gonna go pss, pss, just the entire time. <laughs> I am the alpha dog. Arr. All right. Speaking yeah, of, yeah, you alpha, do have to be the alpha. You do. Um. All right. Speaking of alphas and dogs, uh, this has nothing to do with it. But we're about to get into our segment on questions. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Is this love questions? All right, Sarah, what do we have for our question this episode? Okay, well, our general question is, how long should someone wait before dating again after a painful breakup? How often, Sarah, can you recall Mm -hmm. in your life that you'd had a non-painful breakup? Mm, okay, well, I'm going to skip ahead to, like, after college, because okay. there's a lot of, like, just not that serious stuff before then. Sure. Um, a non-painful breakup? Let's see. I feel like all breakups, no matter what side you're on, is painful to some degree. I would say two. Oh, I take it back yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, non- not painful past, like, one night of being sad. Okay. I see what you mean. So there's a little yeah. bit of, and then, okay. It's like, oh, it's over. And it's like, well, actually, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just wipe yeah. your brows. Like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> All right. I can now, I can now, you know, have my uh, whipped cream and my coffee. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Uh, the pref- the preferred mix over almond milk. Um, so almond milk is fine. <laughs> That's what I do most of the time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just I'm just naming things that Sarah does to her coffee. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, how long? That's a good question. Painful breakups. I wish there was like a like a formula for dating. You know how in dating you're half your age plus seven or whatever. <laughs> That, mm-hmm. that that whole formula. Oh, which... they do have a formula for it. Oh, what's the formula? Oh, actually, different people have different formulas. Some people say um, half the length of the relationship. Okay. Is how long okay. it should take to get over it. Um, but they might change that up if it was like an 11-year relationship. Like, they might have like a... a, a an amount of time that like cuts it to, you know, shorter than five and a half years of getting over it. Maybe they say like after a certain point, you know, two years is good. I mean, you know, like if yeah, no, I'm with people you. break up <laughs> after no, no. like twenty years and you can't be just for crying your eyes out for yeah. ten years, that's that's too much. Well, no, I, I'm I'm only giggling because I wanted to look up formulas because I didn't know there was a formula. You said there was, and I'm like, oh, there's a formula. So there's a Vice article, right, mm. from 2018 that has the breakup equation time it takes to get over an X. <sighs> Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm very curious. All right. So it's a real mathematical formula. X X divided by two plus J plus L min- or J plus one minus T plus K divided by two plus R equals Y. Jeez, now, how many letters? So X is the amount of months you date, month, amounts of month, a time. Oh, sorry, I can't read. X is the amount of time in months you dated. Okay. Y okay. is the amount of time in months it will take for you to get over it. So X is the start 
Y right. is the is the end. And what's the rest of the fifty other letters? <laughs> J is uh, if you can't quite wrap your mind around it. Um, I guess the J is uh, based on whether or not you were cheated on. Um, so, or or I guess w- the getting over process of, uh, of the of the breakup. T is um, like there's a lot of stuff. It's stupid. I hate it. Um, yeah, K, that's way too. K is the amount of times you check his social media per day. Um, oh, so uh, it's like taking into account like mistakes you might make in yeah. like the healing process. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Well, that's kind of clever. Like I wouldn't think about of it that way. Like I wouldn't have put that in there. But yeah, there are things you can do to like get yourself stuck for longer than you need to be. I would definitely agree with that. T is if at any point you get romantically involved with someone else and the sex is all right and they're sort of nice to you. So you take a chunk off of that, apparently. The sex is all right and they're sort of nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think that would add time because you'd be like, they're not as good as my ex. And that makes uh, me miss my ex more. Yeah, you do. I think. Yeah. But you. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Um, and then R is if you feel conflicted between blocking them or letting them watch your Instagram stories for validation oh <laughs> that they still are interested in you at three months. If not, R is zero. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so funny. I mean, so, <laughs> I feel like you could add so many more letters now that I know these are the variables. <laughs> yeah, because this one is J is if you can't quite wrap your mind around why the breakup happened and you're left feeling Claire Danes trying to piece together a terror plot confused and you think <laughs> you're really, really good together, but you have to add more time to get the getting over process because the denial confusion period will take longer. That's what J is. <laughs> Can they have one for like if the relationship was really toxic and like you did trauma bonding? Yeah, because they could well, add that. You can add that. Yeah, there's only technically one, two, three, four, five, six letters in here, but I love. Oh, L is. Um, are you soft? Do you think? Do you do things upset you a lot at the time? Add four months. If not, L is. Oh my zero. god. <laughs> or God, what are other things? Um. Did they, like, get in a relationship really quickly after you broke up? Because that, like, really messes with people. <laughs> <laughs> it's really... Oh, my God. It's re- This is really... You need to... Okay, I'm going to send you this. Uh, this is such a okay. funny article. I'm going to send you the link to this article. This is a really... Send it to me. That is funny. It's really interesting. I feel but- like you could literally have all of the letters of the alphabet in there when you think of all the factors that make a breakup hard. Yeah. But I guess there's a formula for it. But in really, I think it is based off of time, right? <clears throat> so the amount of time it takes, the amount of time you've been in a relationship versus how long should should determine how long it takes for you to, to get over somebody. I was in an eight-year relationship. It took me, you know, years, like at least a year and a half, maybe, you know, maybe, yeah, about a year, year and a half to get over it really and kind of move on. Uh, but that's an eight, that's eight years, right? That's a long chunk. Of, that's mm-hmm. a lot of that's a lot of your life into a relationship. Um, yeah. But you know, if it's a couple of years, you know, maybe it doesn't take as long. Maybe a few more. Maybe a few months. Um, and again, who, who did the breaking up? The, is a, is a factor as well. Were you the one who did yeah. the breaking up, or did you, were you broken up with? That can determine how long the dating process. But the thing is, here's the answer. There's no right answer. Everyone is different. That's true. Now, there is a length where it's too long, right? I agree. I think, and that also is person to person. You can't say mm. for any one person, but if you dated four months, like two years is too long to yeah. be like hung up on them. Yeah. But like, yeah. For, so then, then the equation might come in handy um, to say like, okay, at this point, I'm just giving them so much more of my life than I need to. Mm-hmm. Like they're gone and I'm still not finding anybody to f- that I could be happy with because I'm like like basically dedicating my sadness to them. Yeah. Um but you know t- you take whatever time it takes to heal but there's got to be a point where you kind of realize you've crossed a line into the territor- territory of it's not healing anymore. Yeah. You're just you know? like reveling in sadness. You're just kind of like you're not you're not you're actually not moving forward you're just standing still 
or even you're moving like, backwards. Yeah, you're like creating neural pathways that are like getting more ingrained and um maybe <laughs> I, I talk like I know what I'm talking about, but like like at a point you're actually like making it harder to move on. Yeah. Um yeah. but it's really hard to tell where that line is because of course you need to take the time to heal that you need to take. But you know, and it and I would say your family, your friends will tell you like it's time to move on, but they sometimes say that way too soon. Well, so <laughs> One uh, a thing that my therapist really, uh, I thought was really good at telling. Well, it was it was good advice. Was like, yeah, you know, you're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to be upset, but allocate like really allocate time for it. Like, allow yourself to be able to do other stuff. But if you you know think about it for X amount of time per day, don't don't go before. Don't go beyond that. Just just know that you dedicated you know, 15, 20 minutes, an hour on your day doing this one thing. And then the rest of your day, force yourself in any way, shape or form to kind of do something else. Because really what you're waiting for is for time to heal that wound, right? Because there's Mm -hmm. going to be at some point that time that you spend on it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because you're going to want to do other things, right? Especially if you've yeah. dedicated most of your time to it. And it's hard. It's really, really hard to do because you want to think about it. You want to, you want to revel in it. I know because that's, mm-hmm. that's how I felt. That's all I wanted to do was think about what went wrong, what went wrong and why, like what could yeah. I have done better? And like, what's going on? Like you're still trying to piece things together. But the world moves on, whether you like it or not. The world around you continues to keep doing their own thing. And you're going to be left behind if you're just stuck in this one headspace. So you have to allow yourself to, okay, I'm just going to let myself really think about it. And then I'm going to go over here and do something else. I'm going to podcast. For instance, I, I took a podcasting. That was my that was my therapy outside of therapy. I was like, okay. I allowed myself X amount of time to think about it, but the rest of the time I'm going to podcast. I'm going to do this. I'm going to hang out with people. I'm going to enjoy my time. And then yeah. I even had like a, a Disney annual pass during this time as well. Oh, nice. So I got to go to Disneyland. Just, you know, I would just go by myself. Like every day you get on Splash Mountain and just cry your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> And like the picture that everyone's excited with their family, they're all like looking back at this guy who's sobbing. <laughs> just sob, just tears just rolling down his face. And you buy the picture every time you go through so you can remember your sadness. <laughs> but you see the sadness get as you can just like a flip book, you see the sadness slowly going away. So it's like, oh, well, that'd be kind of nice. frown just goes, starts, starts going upward into a smile. And it's like, oh, oh, there's the moment where I actually enjoyed myself. <laughs> That's very weird, but kind of kind of a sweet idea in like a cartoon universe. <laughs> in the cartoon universe, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in the real world, obviously not going to happen. But in the cartoon universe, yeah, that'd be really fun. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, I forget what I was saying. But yes, <laughs> oh no, oh yeah. So I, I had I had distractions. That's what I was going to say. I had distractions and I had things to to keep my mind off things. And it's hard to. It's it's actually. It's not. It's not a joke. It's kind of hard to be sad in the happiest place on earth. Like, oh, this is fun. Well, like, probably if they see a sad person, they're like people come out of like the trap doors that are like, <laughs> we have to fix this. <laughs> Mickey just comes up to you and go and just like stares at you until you smile. He like he like comes and grabs you and pulls you into like a dark alley. Where they're like, <laughs> take the sad adults that yeah. they don't want like the, to be bothering the children with their sadness. <laughs> Stop being sad. You're ruining the experience for everyone else. <laughs> the kids you don't you... want to see, like, problems in their future. They just want to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. They, they don't want to know what's ahead. You're giving them <laughs> – you're letting them know what their future is going to hold. Stop it. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> they, like, beat you up, like, in the back room of a casino. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you don't owe us money. You own us happiness, damn it. <laughs> and then when you, and then they, they, they just, they, as you exit, they, you're just like, oh, okay. You just have to just put the, the fakest smile ever. But at least, you know, you're not going to get beat up by Mickey Mouse. <laughs> they, won't, they won't break your knees this time. <laughs> yeah. Mickey Mouse just standing there with a, hat, with a, with a ba- baseball bat, like, happiest place on earth. 
He's like, yeah. next time, go to Six Flags. Right. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, if you want depression, <laughs> that's true. If you want to be depressed, go to Six Flags. <laughs> oh, my God. What a depressing... Oh, that is the most depressing uh, amusement parks ever. Oh, man. That's, there's, there's a reason why they sell booze at the park. <laughs> like, oh. oh, my God. <laughs> man, <Yeah>. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that um yeah, you really got to try to spend some time <laughs> oh, yeah. during the day focusing on your life for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um pick I up a new that, hobby. Yeah, pick up a yeah, hobby. Or your career or your friends or making new friends. Yeah. I also think that so as far as when to start dating again, I think some people go into like casual dating or hookups pretty soon and honestly I don't enjoy those so I can't really say how well that works or how soon that's like productive um yeah, i have i have some people either so i don't know yeah some people seem to like be like you know i'll do it right away and i won't actually be like emotionally involved in them but it like that's not what they're looking for anyways and it just helps me you know not be alone um but yeah i can't really speak to that i would say for me this is kind of why I like online dating because, <clears throat> you know, before you're necessarily a hundred percent ready to date, you can just start setting up your profile, right? And you don't actually have to like click, you know, start. You don't have to right. click like, you know, make me public. You can just start setting it up and thinking about it. Um, <laughs> going out with people and taking pictures. You're laughing. I don't know why this is funny. Like. <laughs> You can take your time just, with it if you. No, but I just love the setting up the <laughs> profile thing. I, I don't know. I find that amusing. <clears throat> I mean, some, I'm sure some people are like, I want to get this done as fast as I can so I can get on there. But for me, it's like if you are not sure if you're yeah. ready to date again yet, like yeah. this is like a baby step. This is like dipping your toe in. And then you can just see what's out there. Yeah. And if you're, if like looking at people makes you think about your ex a lot or whatever, you can say, okay, I'm going to make my profile quiet again and take maybe another month or two or whatever oh i don't know i see i, I, I think just like in that. general like looking at people in general or like oh man <laughs> you no, can't go I, outside <laughs> i mean you can't you can do that too but like yeah no on on online dating that's kind of a nice thing because you can just dip your toe in the water and, and be like okay i i'm actually not feeling great about this so i'm gonna put on pause and maybe try again in a couple of weeks or whenever I'm feeling better. Cause I, I think you've probably, you've experienced this too. Maybe before you're totally ready to date again, people in your life start like putting it in your head that you should. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. And uh, that is definitely a thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And then you might be like, I don't know, maybe. And they're like, just try it. And then, Oh yeah. You can just kind of very slowly baby steps. And if they keep getting on your case, you'd be like, I made a profile, okay? Get off my case. <laughs> yeah, with my, with my um with my ten years or whatever of being single, uh, I remember really early on more and more people were like, Oh, I know somebody. Oh, I know someone, you know. They would try and like setting me up and and I'd be like, uh I don't mm. try A, I don't trust your judgment and B <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thanks, but yeah, that's okay, you know. And it's oh, it, it, it. I mean, I get it. It's nice. I, I, you know, that that's that's very nice of them to think, you know, to think of me and like, you know, their their response is, oh yeah, they're a nerd. Yeah, they'll yeah, they'll, they'll get along great. Like yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, they have this one <laughs> aspect of your personality. You guys are soulmates. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's just you know, it's so funny to me that like that happens when you're single for long enough like people yes. really want you to be in a couple <laughs> yeah people really want to see you so somebody it's like you've been single long enough i have people I, I i've pulled resources and i'm gonna find somebody for you don't worry about it it's like, i don't that's yeah okay. that's why <laughs> i say right. society definitely pressures us to be coupled like yeah. being single can be a good time of your life but you'll definitely start to notice it makes other people nervous and <laughs> they want to like see, yeah. they want to see your situation change which is i get it because unless you tell them no i don't want to date ever again like i want to be sing this is my preferred lifestyle is single mm -hmm. and you might have to tell them that a few times cuz most people can't wrap their head around that um 
unless you say that to them, then they probably assume and probably correctly that eventually you do want to find someone. Yeah. So I don't know. It is kind of like some pressure, but they might not be wrong. You know, maybe it is. Maybe they're like noticing that it would be good for you to just start thinking about it. And they might yeah. not be wrong about that. No, no. I, I think I think people have pretty good intuition when it comes to to single people who aren't uh, actively wanting to be single, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I think people have a pretty good radar for be, for those who are open to having a relationship or, or are just having a hard time with it. I know that there will be a point, though, where they will give up because, again, I was 10 years single. <laughs> so at some point, they do end up just dropping it altogether. Uh, but I, I remember for at least three or four years of that, they're like, so when are you gonna when are you gonna when are you gonna and just over and over when are you gonna get that girlfriend or when you can go out mm-hmm. dating and it's like well it's not that i'm not trying it's just that nobody wants me <laughs> so you know and it happens right like dating is hard uh for a reason um i think dating is the new and dating has become just way too hard li- lately i think as as a mm. as a thing it's just become Maybe it's because we just have, you know, it's like if you're given too many choices, it's just hard to pick one or it's uh, just that our maybe our expectations or our needs have changed. So maybe that's another thing. But, you know, I I don't don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't know how important it is to be uh, to have a six figure salary and, you know, have a house of all your own and blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that's like priority in relationships nowadays. Cause that's a rare, that's even more rare to find is someone yeah, with I don't like know. a well, a super well-paying job and a, a, a big old house, a big old house. Well, everybody yeah. wants to be with someone who can, you know, make their life easier, not harder. Like you don't want to be with someone who's like, I have tons of debt and right. no job. You're like, yeah. oh, good. I know where my income's going. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But, um, but yeah, there's there's all kinds of metrics, and some things are more important to some people than others. Um, mm. Yeah, t- I just feel like dating is never very fun. It's never fun until you meet someone. Yeah. And then the funnest is when you meet someone, it's forever, for real, because yeah. then you don't ever have to date again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I I had – it was hard to think of dating because I technically, after my marriage, I you know, and I had my last girlfriend, like, it was 10 years – I mean, it was 20 years before I, before I ever had to court someone again. Right, like to actually go out there and try something. It was twenty. It's been like tw- it was twenty years. Like Jesus, that's a long time <laughs> to 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 have to go back into the game again. But you know, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, we're gonna talk more about this, I guess, at some point. So there you go. Uh, take as long as you need, but don't take too long. I guess is the answer for <laughs> take waiting as long as you need, but not really. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> <laughs> Rush, but hurry up <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of yeah unfortunately at some point yeah at some point anyway but kind of speaking of which you know here we are uh in right cow left coast corner as he has uh, plenty of questions for us this week what do we have to, yeah. to to answer from right cow well his first question is similar but it's more for people who have lost a partner yeah. Um, because it's been 11 weeks since his wife passed and mm. he just, they just buried her ashes, mm. um, a few days ago, it looks like, mm-hmm. or yesterday. And what he asks is, was that supposed to end my mourning period? Have I exceeded what is traditionally allowed? The widowers I have met say that one never truly stops feeling the loss, that the days get easier, but there will always be moments when the loss and the absence of your loved one will feel sharply apparent Mm. um and i have to say no i definitely don't think you should like anyone should be making you feel like you should be done mourning at that point at this point i think that's um that's definitely way too soon i mean whatever 
whatever amount of time it takes you. But yeah, if anyone's saying, you know, once it's been a few months, then that's, that's fine. I, I think they're definitely wrong about that. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's, that's such a, that's such a different thing than a breakup, you know? Yeah. 100%. Um, and by the time you hear this, it'll be another two weeks. So technically, oh, it'll right, be, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's, this, you know, we're doing these episodes back to back. So, right, Cal, when you hear this, and I, and I think I mentioned in the last episode, we're doing it back to back. So you're, you're not going to hear this for a while, but yeah, there's, yeah, especially for uh, uh, someone who had passed, uh, you you can mourn as long as you need to. In that case, it's you know sometimes people mourn forever. I mean, it's just because it's it it was it was um it was something that you had no control over, which is the hardest part. Is we didn't you don't have control over certain aspects of our lives, and and that's a really harsh reality to think about because. Here we are, you know, you're you're in a position where you had no intentions of of leaving your wife, you had no intentions of divorce, you had no intentions of any of that, and yet here you know, life has unfortunately taken her away from you. And mm-hmm. so when that's done, you don't there's no time period, you know. Maybe you'll move on and maybe you'll find another person to be in a relationship with, but that doesn't stop that doesn't mean you don't stop mourning for this person. Like it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're like, well, whatever you know you'll still you know they'll still mean something to you and they'll still be someone who of whom you will feel a great loss for and still care for um yeah as long as it's not directly affecting the relationship that you're current that you end up being in yeah it's just something that is just going to be a part of your life indefinitely and i don't think that's a that i think that's a, a lot anytime someone loses anyone in that way you know, to someone passing, I think that's, I think, fairly normal. I, I mean, obviously, you have to continue moving forward and moving on with your life in, 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 in some respect. But, you, you know, you'll always remember them and they'll always be a part of you. So, I, yeah, there's no, there's no time period. I, I, you know, I still mourn the loss of, of relatives I, you know, I've lost. I mean, they weren't my spouse, but they were relatives. You know, I still mm-hmm. mourn the loss of my grandmother, who was, it's been God almost 20 years right so it's like oh, yeah you think you get over that but no like i still you know every time i think about her and it's not often but then i'll think about her every once in a while and i'll miss her and I'm like oh man i remember when she used to do this for me or when i would do that you know we would do that and do these things or whatever and it was fun and like whatever you know like oh that knowing that'll never be a thing again that's tough so please don't don't feel like you have any rush to to have to process this and get over it. I mean, hopefully you'll you will process it and hopefully you will move forward and 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 continue living and continue doing your life and continue um and again maybe finding love again, which is not an impossibility. That that that's not something that's out of the cards even though it's not something you're thinking about quite yet, but just like yeah, no, feel feel the loss. That's not there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, personally I've never of the widows and widowers I've known, I've never known anyone to like even start dating again, like within one or two years. Mm-hmm. Oh I yeah. Mean, yeah. I'm not saying that it, it can't happen before then if if that's how you how you feel, but mm-hmm. I definitely think any expectation for it is it's different um well first of all just a few months definitely that's i think that's a that's a very a very um i just feel like that's almost objectively wrong like you can't tell someone a few months (laughs) is enough yeah um but it's also like very different than like how people view how you should move on after a breakup because that person chose to leave you yeah. And you're holding on to someone who, could, like, just wouldn't be there for you. They just, they chose to leave your life. And that's so different, you know? Like, it's, yeah. like, you can't, it, people don't want you to stay hung up on someone who isn't doing the same for you because they didn't want to. Right, right. They made a so, decision. They They actively don't want to be, you know, a part of your life when they break up with you. 
Right. So, you know, the, the expectation there is it's going to be probably a lot less time in almost every situation because oh, just yeah, because yeah. you're like, you know, stop giving them what they decided they weren't going to give you. Right. So, yeah, yeah definitely so. don't go don't go by the same metrics at all, I would say. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so pl- yeah. so yeah so pl- don't worry about it no no rush so take your time right Kyle. take your time uh yeah. all right uh what uh, what else we got okay <laughs> so he has two oh let's see here okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna pick a couple of these because sure. I, I did highlight a lot of them okay so you did he has <laughs> <laughs> I, I highlighted more than i think we actually have time for yeah no. so I'm going to squish these two together because they're pretty much this, like just almost one big sentence. But he says, mm. wait, Francis is single? I'm sorry, man. Do you want to talk about it? And then he says, you're both single now? <laughs> 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 what is this world coming to? Are we on one of the not great timelines? Which I guess is a thing. I don't get that. I Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a very, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to expand your, your geek knowledge here, Sarah. Um, because we're oh, all on different, you know. We're in multi. We're in the multiverse, and there's different well, timelines. What movie or and, show are we talking about here? Uh, it depends. It could be any of them. It could be Doctor Who. It could be the. It could be the Flash. It could be. Uh, I like Doctor Who, or at go. least the David Tennant seasons. Yes. Yeah, he's my doctor. Oh man, love Me that guy. Too. Oh, love that guy. But yeah, right. There's different timelines. They're different. Uh, some are good. Some are bad. Because right, like there's a multiverse technically out there. I don't know if that's real, but if there was, I think it might be. Yeah, if there's multiple universes where our decisions create a separate universe, th- there might be a, a universe out there where we're in relationships, like we're doing something with somebody else, um, or we're, um, you know, not doing a podcast or whatever, you know, yeah. or, or all that stuff. <clears throat> but yes, well, uh, there'd be like an infinite number of universes where oh yeah. for every yeah. every single thing that could happen there'd be an infinite number for that thing because it would keep branching oh, yeah. out infinitely so exactly yeah sometimes i think that's kind of a comforting thought like if you get in a bad breakup or whatever and you really miss them sometimes i'll have like these thoughts like well we're probably together somewhere i don't know yeah. that like kind of sometimes when i'm in a weird head space that feels better I don't know. <laughs> well, it, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, this is going to sound really bad, but there for a long time, I'm like, oh, well, at least I know in some universe I'm happy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like but that's also, it's like at least I can keep that going. It's like in, in some universe I'm uh, I'm happy, <laughs> and in some universes you're an assassin. So right. I mean. Well, that'd be badass. It would also make right. me happy. <laughs> well, but then in some universes, right. you're a sad assassin. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just cry every time I kill someone. It's like, ugh. It was so sad. Just you stab. go to the bar oh. afterwards and a single tear falls in your whiskey <laughs> after every kill. Every, after every kill. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i love it oh i want to be can someone make a movie of the sad assassin <laughs> i want i want to see this film of this like really just sad <laughs> oh my god that's so funny um yeah no that's true and then of course it's infinite universes where we don't even exist so yeah uh, that's another weird thought but yeah i uh, yeah. am uh, nothing to be sorry about, really, you know, uh, sadly, unfortunately, relationships ebb and flow and long distance ones specifically. Do I want to talk about it? No. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I that's- think that's the highest your voice has ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's not something we have to talk about. Uh, I th- I'm pretty sure it'll unfold as time progresses on this show. Like, we'll talk about it, I guess, our individual breakups to some little bits and degrees as questions come up, as more um, articles come up and things like that. So I don't... I don't think we'll, yeah. I, 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 you know, at some point, I guess the whole story will unfold, but it's not something we need to talk about right now. It's not... 
you know, we're we're talking, we're more in, interested in what you guys are going through and what you guys are, are feeling. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, but yes, we both are. Um, this is it, it's an okay timeline. Sarah, you're you're doing okay, right? Yeah, you know, it's been a little while for both of us, and yeah, yeah. The the thing with these things is just time makes everything easier. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah. it is. I find it's it's so helpful to like talk about other things and like yeah. other people's problems. I love talking <laughs> about other people's problems when I'm going right. through a hard time, yeah. especially if they're like completely different from mine. Like I remember I went through a, a breakup and I was so, so sad. And then like someone was talking about how annoying their relatives were. And I was like, Oh my God, tell me more, please. Like, I love this. This has nothing right. to do with what I'm going through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listening to other people's issues do definitely get your mind off things because you get to kind of concentrate on their their problems and their kind of frustrations, which is nice. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, it'll, I'm sure at some point we'll be able to we'll talk a little bit more in bits and pieces over time. So don't worry about it, right, Cal? We're gonna it's it's gonna come up at some point. I'm certain of it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, what else do we got next? Okay. Oh, another one like the tags question he had before a couple episodes ago. Oh. Um, how does pornography with women as the primary audience differ from that with men as the primary audience? And how does hetero porn differ from non hetero porn? And I'm just going to say right off the bat, I, I don't know anything about non hetero porn. I'm assuming it's probably similar, but with just, you know, all went all the same gender. I guess, mean, or? it depends. It depends on who's ge- who it's geared towards, right? Oh, it could also be um, like, like multi. Yeah, because if if it's if it's porn for people who aren't just um, into one gender or the other, but they're into multiple genders, it could be really anybody. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it depends on who. It depends on who's geared towards. Here's the. I, I guess I'll answer that one real quick. Um. With hetero porn and non hetero porn, because I mean, look, guy dudes especially are not angry when two women are making out. We're not mad. We actually kind of like it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right. Like, right? Guys love lesbians uh, uh, to an, maybe almost um, un, just. Uh, uh, an abundance, an overabundance, maybe, because uh, yeah, we're 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 totally down watching two women do things to each other. Um, we we don't mind. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I almost think that probably mm. porn made for women who are interested in other women is has got to not be the same thing as porn made for men who are interested in two women together. Like yeah. Because I don't think they, I, I think what's made for men, maybe they like it too. I don't know. Maybe that's a really interesting one because I don't know how much people would enjoy porn about them, but that's made for somebody else. Oh, in other words, they made it like, like they they're in it themselves. Like you made a porn. Like it's with somebody. about them and their relationships, but it's not really made for them. Oh, I don't I know. See. I don't know if they. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I could but... see that being weird. Like. Like, um, this isn't actually, like, doing anything for me because it's not made for me. I don't know. Man, my, my Google, uh, my, my Google search history is going to be really, um, (laughs) so, uh, there, oh, God, all right. Yes, I am 18. Oh my god! I'm glad you're googling this. <laughs> that's it. I'm telling you, my Google, my Google history is going to be. Like, I don't even need to do incognito because we're past that point. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, definitely. So from what I can tell, because it's this is apparently a lesbian porn for women, according to this website, that uh, it it looks just like regular lesbian porn for men like it oh. looks it's just longer like they're really long they're like half an hour long like oh my god <laughs> well maybe they have more story maybe or they're just doing more things because again it, I, I think um yeah i think there has to be more stakes i guess for women than it than for God. oh except oh man <laughs> god some of the oh man these titles 
<laughs> anyway, uh, so there you go. <laughs> I guess I guess it was just something I thought like maybe wasn't the case because you know I'm a woman and I don't really like the porn that's yeah. made for men. So I was like maybe other women don't like it either. But again, I don't know. A lot of women do like porn, so I guess it makes sense that they'd be like, yeah, I like the exact same thing because. Yeah. Who cares if they like it too? I, I it can't does even the same s- thing for me. Yeah, and I can't even say most of these titles, um, but I can say this one: "Banging Her Friend's Cougar." So that's interesting. Um, so enjoy banging. Yeah, your maybe they bang- have like. Yeah. Maybe they have more character development than like porn made for men. I do see a lot of hugging. I do see a lot of cuddling. So it's potential it's possible, uh, but who knows? All I know is that. It, it it exists to some degree, so there you well, go. Well, I think that's that's nice. I, I I like that at least people are taking the like specific audiences into account and creating media for yeah everyone specifically instead of just being like this is this is good enough for everyone and like we'll just kind of um, target it towards our biggest audience. I like that there's like. And of course there is. It's porn. It's a huge industry. It is. But I like the idea that that it is like specialized and keeps in mind. And they probably have like dedicated directors who are like, I only make this kind and I only make it for this audience. You know? Yeah. That's my art. And Yeah. No, no, <laughs> I, yeah. I think that's yeah. good. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I approve. What? <laughs> I like yeah. it. Um but yeah. But there is porn with women as a primary audience. Oftentimes, it's uh, written, right, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, I. Well, like you were just looking up that there is porn created by women for women, right. and so I feel like, and I can't speak for all women, but I feel like a lot of women prefer written stuff. You know, I, I'm a, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. From, I from my do. own anecdotal stuff, I think so, too. So I'm sure that, you know, every kind of tag and <laughs> and thing there is for porn, there's there's a corresponding erotica. So um, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of like the... I, I feel like it's probably the preferred porn for women is erotica, is my guess. Again, of so, course, there's yeah. videos, but yeah. Well, yeah, something that titillates the the brain, right? Something that really um, gets your imagination going. You don't because, yeah, for guys, definitely in general, are they 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 are more aroused by uh, visual mediums. So that's why pornography is so popular, right? It's not the written form; it is pictures and movies and whatever, right? That's what really gets them aroused. But for a mm-hmm. lot of yeah, and and it seems in general maybe not not for everyone, but for for many women, yeah, uh, being able to to experience the descriptive, the emotive, right? Like being able to to read what they're feeling, maybe even just get more description on what's happening, is yeah more t- titillating because you get to put yourself in the shoes of the person in that, in that position. In other words, you get to embody the character as opposed to if you're watching it, you know, you're just watching two people do it. You can't, it's really hard to embody yourself into the person that you're watching into the people that you're watching. Cause that doesn't look like you. That doesn't, you don't, you know, that body part doesn't reflect the body part that you own. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, so it's going to obviously really take you out of the situation. Because again, another thing that porn for in general does is that it, it there's this really unrealistic expectation, right? Men think that their junk has to be, you know, the 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 space needle, right? Like it just has to reach into the heavens, <laughs> right, in order to make you know, in order to make a woman happy. When in reality, it's like the average and. Uh, <laughs> We now know, thanks to Right Cow, what the averages are. Um, that you know, the, the, <laughs> that the, that yes. the, the expectation or what porn is, porn is not a reality. Porn is is hyper reality, right? It's hyper. It's it's a hyper uh, uh, fantasy of what reality is, right? So it's not it's not really real. So yeah, yeah. and I think like women too. 
even when they're like fantasizing about someone, like maybe a celebrity or whatever. Oh, yeah. And but they like I've noticed like me and other women I've talked to, like we we care a lot about like who they might be, like and how they might feel and what the what our lives could look like outside of just like sex. <laughs> if we were together, sure. like we really like thinking about that kind of thing. It's always like, oh, and I, I found out that they're like this and you know, I bet they're mm. like this and yeah, if we did this together, I bet that would be really fun. Just like and I, it doesn't happen that much anymore now that I'm older. Like, you know, we don't like talk about our celebrity crushes that much, but Well, do you have a celebrity crush? Um not really these uh, days, but yeah. I have before and I've been like, I've just imagined like what it'd be like to be his girlfriend and like, you know, what is he like and all this stuff. And well, you um, know, share one, share one, just one. Okay. Well, a couple that I've had, <laughs> um, and I still think they're both really adorable and super cute. Oh, okay. um, and I always get his name wrong and you have to correct me, but Richard Iode. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Rich I, I, and, I, um, wow, yeah. Killian Murphy. Those two I had big crushes on. Ah, oh, big foreigners. Look at you. Oh no, Killian's not a foreigner. He's American, isn't he? He is. He's Irish. Oh, he's Irish. I think, oh, okay. I think he is. Yeah. Um. So oh, Iowa, it's, I think it's Iowate, isn't it? Iowate. Iowate. I oh, God, I'm terrible Richard at Iowate. that. And I like yeah. love him. Yeah. But those two guys, like back when I had like my big crushes on him yeah i would think about like and i would be like oh he proposed to his wife on the hills of ireland oh my god he's so sweet you know <laughs> oh man <laughs> Just- <laughs> i what is really weird too like i've seen his other he's like his like um he has one where he travels around the world eating food i think no no it's was it something traveler he, he takes other comedians with him and he travels i haven't and- seen that one but he's really funny too he is, and he's yeah. so smart he's so smart See, like, we love these other, like, characteristics about him. It's not just, like, looking at pictures and being, like, hot. Like, right. You know? <laughs> no, that's true. So, yeah. Like, you know, there's a reason why. I think that why... carries into erotica. Like, it tells yeah. you all this stuff about the person, and it tells you what they're feeling. And, yeah, I think women really like that. And I think that what? goes for no matter what, who they're attracted to, men, women, right. or, or any gender, really. Yeah. Well, that's dude, that's pretty that's common with women. Oh, Yeah. Both dudes, on the other hand, open up a catalog, and that's enough for them. <laughs> right. <laughs> Guys are so simple. Oh, us men, and we're so simple. of course, there's exceptions for both. Like, oh, no, yeah. You know, I'm I'm talking, sure we're talking in general. We're talking in, in general. general yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's guys who love erotica and are like, oh, the story. <laughs> I used to read a lot of erotica, actually. I really enjoyed it. Did you? Because uh, it's, inter- it's interesting. Like, it's there, there's, there is more. You, you start to care about the characters like you care about their lives a little bit more so when they actually get into the encounter it's like oh it, it's meaningful versus like you know most porn is just it starts in the bedroom it doesn't there's no build up right so you don't know who right. they, you, they're, <laughs> you're they're, already they're, there <laughs> yeah they have no names they have no personalities there's only one thing and it's for them to go and bang each other so Yes, yeah, he didn't have to chase her down the street because she left her thong in the sex club like Cinderella. Right. <laughs> Does this thong fit you? <laughs> wow. God. Oh, man. All right. Anyway. Uh, all right. We got a couple more, right? Let's 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 see what those other questions are. Okay. Or did you want to just go to the last one? I don't know. It's up to you. Um, I'll, let you I'll let you decide. Yeah, let's just get to the last one because right. <laughs> we took a lot of time on some of these. Yeah. Okay, so his last question was, how does dating in Southern California differ from dating elsewhere? Is it better or worse? Why? Uh, it's worse. I think so. <laughs> dating in Southern California, uh, for the most part, y- is that you have an expectation. Right. There's there's that whole uh what is it? A a California six is an Alabama ten, right? Like you, you know, we 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 mm. we have uh, there's a, a much more larger emphasis on attractiveness here in Southern California than I think in most other parts of the country because this is Hollywood. This is where models and actresses and actors and all sorts of beautiful people congregate, 
they want to yeah. show off their bodies because there's so much beach, right? You know, um, as opposed to like n- northwestern states where maybe people it's too cold to go to the beach or uh, you know the weather is not always acclimated to to beach weather right even oregon doesn't have a lot of beachiness but you're in southern california san francisco has beaches nobody wants to go it's cold but <laughs> <laughs> but in southern california it's pretty much warm weather 24/7 7, 365 days a year Right. And so you have a lot of people emphasizing exercise and fitness. A lot of buff people, a lot of attractive people. I went to a pie mm-hmm. place once. Okay. It's called the Republic of Pie in North Hollywood. Okay. Just a place. Yeah. It was just, it's just a pie place. They sell pie and coffee. Really? In Southern California? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hipster pie and hipster coffee, Uh-oh. but it's still <laughs> pie and coffee. Right. Um, and the staff are beautiful. The people who are just sitting there on, on their MacBooks because no one can be bothered to, no one can, can dare, uh, be bothered to have a Windows laptop because, ugh, the dregs. <laughs> oh, oh my God, you have a Windows laptop? Oh, you're not, uh, go away, you rabble. <laughs> Right, everyone's got their MacBooks open, and you know everyone's dressed like they're ready to, you know, go to I don't know somewhere. It's it's like in the middle of fall, and they have their scarves on and their their cravats and their you know their little little. uh, Wait, uh, in Southern California? Oh yeah. Oh well, we okay. It doesn't even doesn't get cold there. But we consider cold anything under seventy degrees. So oh my god. (laughs) All right. Cold for us is any is like sixty five is cold, right? In oh Southern California. Gosh. Okay. I went to Colorado once, which has snow, right? It snows and it, it's whatever, yeah. and it gets hundred degree weather. I was there during like March, uh, uh, many years back, and me, a Canadian, and a Col- Coloradan were there, and I was freezing my ass off because it was like drizzling, and it was like. <laughs> 60, yeah, it was like 63 degrees. Oh, my God. I was God. like, oh, my God. It's so cold. And these guys in shorts and T-shirts are just like, oh, you're a pathetic Californian. You're such a pathetic <laughs> Californian. So, yeah. So, anyway, I say all that to kind of emphasize that there is a huge industry of looking good. Plastic surgery, mm-hmm. very big. The Kardashians are from here, you know. Um, Actually... Every big kind of like, I don't know, uh, what is it like beach ba- beach based reality show is from like is mostly from Southern California. There was a the, what was it Laguna Beach was like a reality show that existed for a yes. while. Right? Yeah, that was and, the uh, the OC reality show. Yeah, and then there's Paris Hilton, right, and that whole rabble that was very big. All Southern California, right? Like all of this stuff, or maybe she was New York. I don't remember, but but it all comes back to Southern California again. Kardashians mm-hmm. are here, I think, and like Malibu people from Malibu and people from you know the Pacific. We have stupid names like Pacific Palisades, you know, like we have all of these fancy names, right? Half half of the state, half of even just Southern California is just rich, wealthy areas. Right, Orange County, uh, the again Pacific Palisades, Malibu, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, uh, the Bel Air. Right, we have a Fresh Prince from Bel Air. Right, like we have all this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, and so there's this this emphasis. So that's why dating is tough because there is a. It's way more about status, and, like, just your position in the world. That's way more important. And what you can get from that person, I think, is way more important in the grand scheme of things in dating in Southern California than just like personality. Like when they say the whole the whole meme about, about like must love hikes, walks on the beach, all that stuff is because this place, this is the place that like perpetuated all that. Because guess what? All we do is hike. <laughs> That's like our yeah. thing <laughs> is hiking. Like all we do is hike. All we do is walk along the beach. That's all we do. Well, walking along the beach, I can see, but I have yeah. to say, hiking is a pretty big thing up here with the forests. 
Yeah. Well, we have a lot of hills. We have a lot of mountainous area to hike. So, you know, we have Griffith Park. We have um, a Runyon Canyon. We have all these places where it's like, oh, we're going to hike. Oh, let's go hike to the to the Hollywood sign. <sighs> hike, hike, hike. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah. Hike, hike, hike. Ugh. So annoying. Anyway. <laughs> and, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That, that sounds rough. I I am really glad that I'm not... <laughs> I'm not in such a like superficial place. Yeah, it's very. Um, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. I would th- I would be so uncomfortable there. Like I don't like um I just don't like that like atmosphere, you know? Um when yeah. I've come down to Southern California for they're so nice, but then like yeah. I hear and see things of that and I'm just like, this is so weird. It's like another world for me almost. Um, it is. For a lot of people. That's why people like to come here is because it's yeah. li- you feel like you're in a different place. It's definitely an experience. I yeah. do I do love how friendly people are down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're, not, we're, not, we're not rude. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the tough thing about up here is like people really care a lot more about personality and yeah. like feelings. But we're super... Um, like shy and kind of closed off, and yeah. like we don't look at each other and do not say hi to people you don't know, like ever. Like, yeah. it, the, like the most friendly thing that happens is like sometimes you pass someone who's very f- friendly in a very good mood, and they're like, "Hey, how's it going?" And you're like, yeah. "Hey," <laughs> that's like yeah. the biggest like stranger, um interaction you're going to have <laughs> yeah oh yeah 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 here it's so laid back and it's so casual that i as much as i hate it i'm not surprised when someone starts like having a conversation with me in an elevator or just like in line at a store like that happens way more than i like because i hate talking to people <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, it doesn't happen very much here. Yeah, and it happens way too often here where I'll be in line and someone will just turn around and just start having a conversation with me about how long the line is. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't... Like, it just... Uh, it just uh, it's just so... It's so hard. But that's the thing, Pretty right? Weird. Like, it's We're just a different world. We're, we're 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 just kind of in the perfect spot for for a lot of things, and that's why this. And we set trends, right? California sets trends that the rest of the country ends up uh, up uh, adopting. You know, we we mm-hmm. we like to be the first in everything. I think we're still the fifth largest economy in the world, right? Like we could be our own country. You know, like it's just wow. like California. That's why California is just so insane. So yeah, I don't know. I I'm sad that I. Like, I like living here. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy Southern California. I love it. But I, you know, it it makes the dating scene that much tougher, you know? Like, I was very fortunate that every person I've ever dated in my entire life are, like, way out of my league. So I'm very lucky in that respect. (laughs) Like, everyone I've ever dated was like, wow, I look like this and you look like that. That's weird, but thanks. <laughs> like I appreciate it. <laughs> like you know. So well, you I, know, a good middle ground was I lived in San Francisco, and that was great. It was like people were yeah. friendly and talked, but they weren't like s- extra superficial about how you looked, like your your face and your body. Yeah. But there was a higher standard for fashion than where I yeah. live currently. So I had to up my ga- my fashion game, which I don't have to do here at all. No. Here it's just about staying comfortable and trying not to get depressed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the comfiest clothes yeah. you can find. Um, but yeah, in San Francisco, it was, it was great. It was friendly. But I was like, I need, I need better clothes. I can't just wear jeans and like logo t-shirts all the time. No. So you, you have did, like to. a lot more shopping there. Yeah. You were shopping. Um, <laughs> I did more shop. I don't really do much shopping here. I, I order stuff online usually, and oh, okay. it all tends to look the same because I pretty much have one online store I like. Um, mm. But yeah, I I think the friendliness down there. If the friendliness down there could like mix with the like um less superficiality of up here, yeah, I think it'd be perfect. 
So maybe San yeah. Francisco is a good good middle ground. Oh, but you just have to make sure you're wearing some, I don't know, whatever they wear I'll up just, there. You go to H&M and it's not that expensive. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I used to shop at the, I don't know if they still have it, but it was either American Eagle or I think it was maybe American Eagle. And they had like a thrift section. Oh, God. Wow, really? Well, yeah, I mean, it was I'm so sure crazy. American Eagle still exists. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Or maybe it was American Apparel. I don't you know. would go upstairs to the second floor, and there was like these racks of like super cheap stuff because yeah, they had like a tiny little thrift section just to be cool, and that had good stuff. Uh, it, maybe it was yeah. I don't know. I think um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't had to shop for clothing with a late a lady in a very long time. The last person I shopped clothing with was my ex wife, and she was a. Uh, Forever Twenty One, H and M, all that stuff. Like that was her. Yeah, Forever Twenty One had some yeah. good stuff. Yeah, that was her kind of thing. I and I'm like, oh, okay, great. I guess. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just wear print. You know, I just I, I I don't buy clothing for me usually. So like, I usually get gifted shirts, like printed tees or whatever, and that's what I wear. So like, I have shirts in my closet that are at least that are like. 15 20 years old that i still wear <laughs> like yeah. i don't i don't i don't change my attire very often i just recently started wearing like straight plain colored no graphic just plain colored t-shirts because i'm like yeah at some age i have to dress like an adult <laughs> like, right you know there's at some point i have to look like a regular adult person and i realize also young people don't dress like I did when I was younger. It's like more and more people are dressing very well. But again, it's Southern California. Oh. So you know. Well, yeah. I think my um my fall attire is a little bit fancier because it's hard for me to find nice t shirts that I like for mm. like summer. So I do mm. wear a lot of like print print t shirts or like t shirts I get from like five Ks and stuff. So oh, okay. Yeah. Because that's when I go to that. every is one I go to every year and it has like the best t-shirts. It's like <laughs> the best material. Always yeah. like a really good fit. I just love their t-shirts. So <laughs> I need to get more like nice shirts for the summer because I wear those t-shirts like all summer. Well, no. Well, you know, I mean, look, I, I want to live in a world where I can just wear, just dress comfortably and not have to think about it because I don't have any fashion sense and I don't really want to think about it. But everyone around me does. That's the problem. Is everyone around mm. me has fashion sense, and it's tough to kind of keep up, but uh, it is what it is. Um, all right. So thank you very much, Ray Calificos, for all those questions. As always, you keep us on our toes with clever questions. All right. Um, let's wrap it up then with an article, and at some point we'll do a bonus episode, I think. Uh, it's going to take some time, but we'll get there eventually. So, what do you? Uh, we have one article here left. I'm guessing that's the one, or maybe two, actually, technically. But it's up to you. Um, I was going to choose five things even the most honest couples fake to make good relationships even better. Oh, I found this one interesting because it's <laughs> true. It's so true. All right, five things. Now look. You kind of have to, you know, I'm a big proponent of being honest and truthful in a relationship, but I, after I told Sarah what I do when I talk about clothing (laughs) on women, uh, I should probably fake it to maintain future relationships, Uh, because that is one of the things they say in here. (laughs) Um, But anyway, all right, what's the, what, what do we got here? What are some of the things that we should be faking? Okay, so five things it's okay to fake to make a relationship work as long as you don't do them too often. Sure. Uh, one is excitement over something that you aren't excited about. I I actually do this all the time. <laughs> do this. Do you all. fake it? I do. Um, yeah. Because I mean, I don't know how much of it is faking it. Because part of me is like, I'm excited that you're excited. I'm glad that people like even if it's just people who are my friends it doesn't have to be in a relationship but like i'm really glad you have something that really gets you all riled up and turned on not in the sexual sense but just like yes this is the thing that gets me going it's like that's awesome that i really like that stuff that's that to me is really cool yeah yeah i think it's it's cool when 
you can say like, oh my god, I love how excited you are about this. You yeah. don't have to be like, me too, I want to do that all the time with you, but you know, <laughs> yeah. like, I'll go yeah, to yeah, all yeah. of those festivals with you, but just like, right. oh, I love how much you love that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's just as good. Uh, yeah, it's this kind of like talks about where someone's like saying something they're excited about and the other person's like, cool. <laughs> don't even look up and it's like, okay. I don't know if you just can't bother or if you're trying to let me know to never bring it up to you again, but it does kind of sting a little bit. It does. I mean, especially if it's something that is something you've been excited about and it's the same thing over and over and over again. And it's like, okay, no, I know you are. That's great. Stop. <laughs> Relax. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is. So if, if someone's, there's nice ways to say, like, <laughs> I think it's awesome that you like that, but, you know, it's, I'm never going to be as excited about it as you are. There's, there's nicer yeah. ways to say it or imply it. Yeah. And if you kind of, like, give that impression to somebody and they, like, always talk to you about it and they try to get you excited about it and, I don't know, they, they kind of get bothered that you're not as excited about it. Yeah, like you imagine don't have to, like pretend yeah. to have a passion that you don't have, you know. Sure, like imagine someone being really excited over a celebrity and just wanting to talk to you about them all the time. Like, <laughs> it can get tough over time. I mean, especially if it's a celebrity you don't even know about, or like, okay, you're like lukewarm about. All like, right, but you know, yeah, they're very excited all the time, always. Like, all right. Yes, cool. Yeah, I've, I know a few people like that. Um, oh no, I I couldn't imagine. Oh wow, that, yeah, that was weird. I just plucked that out of the sky too. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah. You just can't like you can't really. It's very rare that you can get somebody else super excited about something. Some people do. Some people are sure. like, especially like something like sports. Like, oh, I never cared about sports, but now that I'm with him, you know, I wear all the gear every game, and we make all the, the color-coded snacks, and um, that seems so, to be a thing that people get excited about. Some couples but, do that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So some things people can get each other excited about, but for the most part, if you just, I don't think you have to pretend to be as into it as them, but if you're just like... Oh, yay. Like, if they're excited, you're like, yay. Or, you know, oh, I'm I'm so happy that that makes you happy. Right. But yeah. not in, like, a snarky way, pa- Yeah, don't, don't be patronizing on that part. Yeah. Just, just you know, be genuine about your excitement, but also that you're excited for them, not excited because of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else? Uh, number two, that you love their gifts. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Unless yeah, it's like yeah. an insulting gift, but like, like something that's really for them. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, don't, like when, yeah, like when Homer bought like, Marge a bowling don't ball. Like don't you know, what's that? When Homer bought Marge a bowling ball, you know, <laughs> like oh yeah, that's obviously for Homer, but you know, yes. So you, or, you had gifts that you were you were not necessarily excited about, but you were you, you expressed excitement anyway. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think. I think the only time I've really gotten upset was the card. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I got a card from a boyfriend once that <sighs> it really, it like hurt because <gasps> wow, he had written me such nice cards before. And this card, like the message was like something I would write in a coworker's card that I didn't know that oh. well. It was so... Yeah like impersonal and I thought the gift was fine, but, and I, I pretended to think the card was sweet, but I was so sad about that. I got to tell you best wishes. I was just like, <laughs> Oh my, I think it was like, no, it wasn't even that. I can't remember, but Oh man. Oh my God. I, oh, I was, sucks. I think, and that was like, and that was like a few months before we broke up, but I was mm. like, wow is this is this the beginning of the end almost like that voice inside of me even though i was like no he just didn't know what to write you know but like somewhere inside of me i was like wow he's not feeling it anymore yeah so that was rough but you know i mean if if i was with someone who like even though he expressed crazy lovely things to me just couldn't write a card for to save his life it would be different but i had gotten really nice cards from him before so it was just yeah it was it was rough, but I still pretended like it was great. I don't think I should have in that situation, though. I think the card's no. a little bit different. 
Yeah. I think I should have been like, I don't know. Should I have said something? Yeah, I think so. I, I would have been like, I would have been like, wow, this is so different from just be like, you don't have to be accusatory, but be observant. Just be like, oh, this is so different from the cards you normally write. That's, is everything okay? Like, because this is, a, yeah. this, you know, as opposed to like, Oh, is there? Yeah, as opposed to like, well, why do you normally? Why didn't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's going on? Yeah, you know. yeah. Probably. Um, I think I was, of course, afraid to bring anything up because I was like, well, if I say something, it'll make the you know, it'll make him acknowledge it, and yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah, but I think that's the one time, and I've gotten presents that I was like. Well, they don't really know me that well, but that's okay. You know, the effort's there, and I love that the effort and the thought are there. Like, the thought, it's the thought that count. It's like when I see that the thought isn't even there, like that card, I'm like, ooh, ouch. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I getcha. So, I getcha. like, if someone bought me a big cheese wheel, for a well, gift, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I might be like, <laughs> You, you better be melting all. this cheese. I need this cheese melted immediately because <laughs> I'm not going to eat it otherwise. <laughs> yeah. I would. St- I would probably. That's the other thing is I try to spin it. Even if I don't love the gift, I try to spin it into something that I do love. Like, oh my god! Like this will be so good if we like melt it into like a, a fondue. Sauce. Yeah. yeah, that would be. This will be so fun for that. I mean, yeah, maybe it was meant for a fondue. It's like, I know how much you love melted cheese. Let's use this for a fondue. <laughs> like, maybe yeah. this hypothetical cheese wheel was meant for a fondue. <laughs> you never know. Nothing like fresh cheese know. in a fondue. Yeah, you never know. All right. <laughs> what, what else? What is next? Uh, number three is being okay with a with a one-off that isn't so okay. Yeah, this one's an interesting one, uh, which... I can understand. Again, one off, right? Uh, yeah. w- learn from our mistakes. The one about the the ketchup, though, I don't understand. But the other stuff. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Oh, yeah. It's just like little things that you might nag someone about, like right. after the first few times it happens. Yeah. But if they make a mistake once or they they forget one time. Um, you know, you can let it go. And that's kind of like, like, you know, there's like this thought that like, you should let people know when something bothers you. Right. But you can also let a lot of things go, little things, if it's like the first time. Yeah. Or well, it just happens a couple times. But like, if they keep ruining your kid's french fries and <laughs> your kid's right. crying every time, you can be like, look, they don't like it on top. They like it on the side. <laughs> Right. It's a it's a pick your battles sort of situation, right? Like yeah. okay, you know, you don't have to get angry over every little thing, but also You don't have to correct them the first time every time. You can see right. if it keeps happening or if it's really that big of a deal to you. Yeah. And this is obviously not like this is obviously just small things versus really big things. These are all just small. All right. Well. Mm-hmm. That's a that's annoying. <laughs> but, right. You know. Yeah. It's not like they punched a hole in the wall, and you're like, "Well, I'll see if that happens a couple more times." Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's yeah. That's that's. <laughs> the, 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 this is that that that's not right. That's not okay. That's not right at all. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, but yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I've, I, you know, I I understand picking your battles. I, I'm I'm pretty good at that. So I get that one completely. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> What's the next one? <laughs> As I read ahead. <laughs> Saying that someone else is definitely not hot. <laughs> okay. I think that's silly. I think what I would say instead is like, eh, they're okay. I'm not really that into them. I wouldn't be like, oh my God, they are definitely not hot. <laughs> I think that's going overboard. <laughs> All right. Um, look, I understand insecurities and understand why we don't point out why other people are attractive or unattractive or whatever right well normally you don't point out well normally you feel okay pointing out when someone's unattractive i guess but if you point out people are attractive yeah i can get where that's coming from like it, it's it's easy to bruise egos when you, you're like oh wow that was you know it's there's that meme of the guy and a girl and he's turned around looking at a girl walking behind like yeah. past him <laughs> 
you know. <laughs> and she's just got, she's like, uh. Yeah, like, uh, hello, I'm here. <laughs> you know, that, that, that he, stock like, photo. He, like, actually stops in his tracks and, like, turns all the way around to look at his leg. Yeah, like, look, you know, try, try, to, try to keep that to a minimum, right? Like, you know, but... <laughs> Uh, you know, you can. You know, sometimes there's just people who are like, "Wow." Yeah, yeah you just. I, I I remember pointing out to to my significant other when women would dress in the craziest, most provocative ways. Like there was a woman in just a suit jacket and no top or bra, but the suit jacket was kept together. But you could tell, like you could see her cleavage it just went down, and I'm like. Well, that's a way to dress, you know, and they look and like, oh, my God, yeah, that's a way to dress. It's like, OK, you know, stuff like that. Right? Yeah. But, if you uh, have to look, then come up with a subtle dig to share with yeah. your significant others. So they right. Be like, yeah. They'll be like, wow, <laughs> they're so. No, just be like, oh, yeah, that's a that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't mind if you like bring up like little things that you're like judging other people on. They just don't want you yeah. to be. Like, be like fawning over them or telling right. you how attractive they think they are. Yeah. I had a, I dated someone who he would always like say what he thought other people were attractive. Mm-hmm. And it was so fun. He was so unaware because one time he was like, he was like, yeah, th- there were some really hot girls there tonight. I was like, yeah, there's some good looking guys too. And he was like, it makes me really uncomfortable when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I literally only said it because you said the same thing, and I wanted to see if it bothered you. <laughs> because it bothers me. And I swear, when I said that, he was like, okay, I can see why maybe you wouldn't like it when I say <laughs> I was like, yeah. Well, I've, yes. I've, I've become comfortable enough. I mean, I know guys, not all guys are still comfortable enough to do this, but I'm comfortable enough to turn to my significant other and say, like, wow, that guy is really hot. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like that's crazy. That dude is crazy attractive. That's weird, you know. Like yeah. I, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, yeah, I can tell when an attractive man exists. Like I understand, right? Yeah, and I'm the same with women. Like yeah. if I see a really gorgeous woman, I'm like, oh my god, she is yeah. gorgeous. I think it's. I think a lot of women are like verbal about when they see other beautiful women, and it's. I mean, honestly, it should be perfectly acceptable for men, too. But for some reason in our society for a long time, it was it isn't or it wasn't or it's It's heading in the direction where it's okay. Yeah. What's that? It still kind of isn't. I mean, it's still it's still difficult for like other guys still feel uncomfortable, I think, being like, oh, man, look at that. And they're like, "Uh, I'd rather not. (laughs) It's like, well, all right. I mean, sure. It's fine. But anyway, yeah. um, we have one more that um, okay. I um, yeah. This is yours. This is, this mine. is where you could improve. <laughs> this is yeah. This is mine. Yeah. <clears throat> it's okay to fake that you like what they are wearing. <laughs> yeah. And um. <laughs> and then I love how in here it says, "Wait, doesn't everyone know this? I just assumed. I guess." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I think it says here. I think that every man knows the answer to how do you look? How do you look like? Oh wait, how to do? Wait, how to do? You, this is a badly spe- this is a badly worded pre- question. <laughs> how do I look? Uh, how does my butt look like in these pants? And the answer is great. Or how do I look in my new dress? Amazing. Did I choose the right clothes for dinner? Yes. Uh, I didn't do this. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, I didn't. I would often say no. You don't look good in those in, in that. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> set of clothing. Uh, no, can you please change? Oh my god! You would say, "Can you no, please change?" No, no, no! Change? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> But I'd be like, N- I, I would, I would either, or I would preface it with like, "Well, do you want me to lie?" <gasps> <laughs> Jeez, yes, they want you to lie, <laughs> and then they I'd, want you to either tell the truth or lie, whichever one gets the answer that they're looking for. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, it, it says here, if the expression on that face was anything other than joy, you messed up. Yeah, I'm, I, I guess I messed up a lot because I am 
yeah, I was a little too honest when it came to. And mind you, I was a terrible dresser, so I had n- I had no like she never told oh, me I dressed badly. That's terrible. But I you was a terrible what? dresser. In in other words, <laughs> I I'm <laughs> This is just getting worse and worse. Well, because I just <laughs> I just wore a pair of jeans and like whatever t shirt was lying around. That's it, right? Like I didn't. But if she I, wore the same thing, I'm guessing. Oh no, you I didn't. Said, well, that was different. If she wore a t shirt and jeans, I never said anything. It was when she tried well, to dress good. up, which is worse. <laughs> when she tried to dress up. Yeah, when she tried to dress up was when I was like. But she failed, and I let her know. <laughs> Well, at least you held her to the same standards when it was t- t-shirt and jeans. That's good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If it was t-shirt, which is what our normal attire was, was t-shirt and jeans. Now, mind you, look, I didn't say it that often. I make it sound like I said it all the time. I didn't actually say it that often. I may have <laughs> said it, like, of the eight years we were together, I may have said it, like, five times total, right? Which is not that much, given eight years of dressing up and doing things. She's She was usually very good <laughs> at dressing well. It just happened to be there were a few times where I'm just like, oh, that's new. <laughs> oh, like, you know, oh, all right. I mean, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. I, like, I, I, mean, I just, I, I can't, I can't help it. Was, I was she just like, picking oh. like really ugly clothes or were you like, no, that doesn't fit you well? They were clothes that I felt were just, yeah, didn't, they didn't fit her body type, I guess. Now, mind you, she was. Which is weird because she was cut. She was, I mean, it was, I don't know. She, she was very skinny. She was like a size zero. So, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, but she had a really big butt. So, I guess that was oh my God. the other thing, you know, which, which was Jeez. not a bad thing. But I was just like, okay. So, certain clothes looked weird in certain combinations. And I think. You know, it was just like, oh, no, maybe not that. <laughs> I don't know. But again, it didn't happen very often. Most of the time, she dressed very well. And she dressed, she knew exactly, she, you know, she knew, how, she, she knew how to coordinate and all that stuff. Like, she was not unaware of fashion. But I feel like maybe there were some times where I think she was trying to buck a trend or to do something different. And I was like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, oh my God. maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I think what you should do is when that when that happens again, just yeah. imagine a situation where even if everyone else thinks she looks ridiculous, you think she's the most beautiful thing in the world. I mean, I, I did. <laughs> well, here's so the it's thing. okay if other people think like, oh, that's an ugly trend she's trying and all this stuff, but it doesn't bother you. You still think she's radiant. I sh- I will I will try. I didn't do it with even this last girlfriend. I was also very <laughs> talk. I was also very much like, oh, you're gonna wear that. Oh my god! How do you have this blind spot? <laughs> you seem like you really care how people feel. <laughs> I, I, well, because I. <laughs> It's like, I, so, it's like such an obvious one to even people who aren't empathetic know how to do this. Well, <laughs> well um, yes. Again, I have to. I'm going to be out with. <laughs> I'm thinking about like, well, I got to be out with. Them. <laughs> I don't like. Uh, oh my god! Like, I got. I, <laughs> The like, only time I would do this is maybe if I thought like, and it wouldn't be because I'm like out with them, but I'd, yeah. if I'm like, okay, like this is, he might not know this, but like, you can see his balls, you know, oh sure, in sure, this sure. outfit yeah, yeah, or yeah. something. Like, yeah, yeah. it's it's too revealing in a way that they might not be aware of. Right, right. They're in wearing... which case, I would still be very gentle about it. I'd probably be like, I can see up up your shorts. You right. know, so there, I don't know how, yeah. how you feel about that, but that's the deal. And if he, if he was like, great, that's, like, that's what I'm going for. I might be like, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, well, who are you trying to flash exactly? Like, you know? it's like no one. I just like that they have air. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, who are that's you true. trying to get attention from? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, you yeah. can't really police people's clothing that way either. You can't be like, oh, you're. You're trying to show off and stuff, but 
Yeah, if they're going to be like breaking the law kind of flashing, then you can probably yeah. say something. <laughs> I, I've Look, guys who wear like basketball shorts and stuff, look, I get it. It's comfortable. But I'm so tired of seeing your balls. <laughs> I've seen so many dudes' balls who wear like basketball shorts and boxers. And I'm like, wear regular underwear, at least if you're going to wear loose shorts. Don't wear boxers under like loose boxers under basketball shorts or like you know whatever like wear things that keep things in place don't let your balls hang out i've seen so many balls (sighs) anyway you know you're right (laughs) (laughs) and don't wear uh david bowie's pants from the labyrinth either all right don't do that oh my god well (laughs) you can wear the pants just don't put three tennis balls in the (laughs) (laughs) crotch Yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't. In the uh, cod piece. In the cod piece, yeah. Wear a dancer's belt if you're going to wear that. All right. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> there you go. Uh, that's, that's it. I'm terrible. I know. I, I, criti- I am bad at criticizing <laughs> the, what, uh, women wear. That's very true. And again, I'm, a, I have no fashion sense either. I wish they would tell me when I look bad, but I was never, ever, be- I've never been told I look bad in what I wear, which I think is, a shame. I probably, sh- I'm pretty sure I probably look bad in something I've worn. So there you go. Right, oh. Pete. Pete knows. Pete he just knows. went right on top on top of the keyboard. And don't you come back here and do that again. <laughs> Pete loves the keyboard. Uh, he he's, does. A keyboard- he's a keyboard cat. That's for sure. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Well, thanks, everyone, for listening. This is our back-to-back. You may not notice, because this is going to be a week apart, but this is our back-to-back edition of the Spooky Season episodes of Is This Love podcast. Thanks, for everyone. thanks everyone, for listening. You guys are amazing, as always. All I can ask. You don't, have to, you don't even have to give, you know, fork over a buck over at the patreon.com slash aka the other guy for the bonus episodes that we produce every once in a while. We should probably do it more, but we only do it every once in a while. <laughs> but yeah. we have a bo- your bonus episodes. We have about 10 of them by now. So go ahead and take a look at them. We'll have more in the future where we get to talk about the sillier side of relationships. So check that out. But no, you don't have to do that. All we want is your review at the podcatcher of your choice. Leave a review five stars, preferably, and that you liked it. And those stars and those reviews go out to people who are looking for a good podcast, looking for something new, looking to listen to about uh, a podcast about relationships. And they're going to come to us because Sarah and I know what we're talking about. And so does Pete. Pete knows what he's talking about, too, which is great. <laughs> so go ahead and check it out uh, and subscribe. Oh, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Please subscribe so you never miss an episode. Is this love podcast? Is this love pod at gmail.com if you want to leave your question with us? We'd like to answer it just as Right Cow does and just as our uh, listeners do at the beginning. Go ahead and do that. Also, is this love pod at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook if you want to send us stuff there? We are more than happy to go ahead and talk to you on those platforms. You get to see lovely pictures of nature in the Instagram, thanks to Sarah, who yeah. wants to actually be outside. She touches grass, unlike me, who does not touch grass. Um, so go ahead and do that. And, of course, you can um, – uh, that's it. <laughs> I was going to say you can do something else, but nah, that's right. Uh, A.K.A. the other guy on Twitter and Instagram for me, Sarah Nade dot and dot Pete on Instagram for her. <laughs> My favorite. There's not really anything there anyway, so it's okay no, if but, you don't remember. But do it. The more, if enough people join, she'll probably start putting content up. But you go ahead and follow her there. And oh, that's will it. she? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe. You never know. Maybe. If she, Who knows? Maybe if Sarah know. hits a thousand followers, she'll be like, oh, man, that's a lot of people. I should probably give them something. Dang. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. If I hit a thousand, I will put something up. <laughs> I know. I have like 1,300 on my personal one, and I'm like, oh I should God. really I should really pro- start posting things. <laughs> I don't post that often. I have often. like a couple hundred on my main account. <laughs> yeah, my main, yeah, my main account is pretty good. Uh, thanks, everyone who follows me on there. I'm sorry I don't do anything on there. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Happy spooky holidays still. We have a Halloween podcast coming up in a couple weeks. Actually, maybe next week, really. I don't remember this is going out. So be prepared for that. We're going to get spooky and share some of our favorite Halloween stuff because it's everyone's favorite holiday, apparently, Uh, at least according to Twitter. So I'll talk to you all next time. Have a great week. And remember to go ahead and uh, love those lesbians making out. Oh, yeah.
Lesbian oh my porn. god. <laughs> by everyone if you are a lesbian <laughs> enjoy it otherwise <laughs> they're not making it for you straight people <laughs> they're not making it for you <laughs> all right bye <laughs> oh man